Hi everyone, in this topic, I'm going to discuss to you absolute value, operations on real numbers, powers, roots, and orders of operations. Let's first have absolute value. Absolute value in formal definition is the undirected distance of x from the origin. Thus, the absolute value of x will be equal to x if x is greater than 0. The absolute value of x will be equal to 0 if x is equal to 0 and it will be equal to x if x is less than 0. So let's have here some examples. The absolute value of 0 is equal to 0. The absolute value of 100 is equal to 100. The absolute value of a negative number 1 is equal to positive 1. The negative of the absolute value of 10 is equal to negative 10. So it's still negative. It's because the negative sign is outside the absolute value. So we just have to um, find the absolute value of 10, which is equal to 10, and then just copy the negative sign. So that's why the answer here is negative 10. The next will be the operations on real numbers. First is the addition. If we are going to add numbers of the same signs, we're just going to add their absolute values and affix to the sum the common sign. So let's have here an example. So 8 plus 3, so it is equal to 11. So since um, they are both positive, so let's just add their absolute value. So the absolute value of 8 is 8 and the absolute value of 3 is 3. So that's why 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. So next is negative 27 plus negative 3. So this uh, two numbers also have the same sign which are negative. So just add their absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 27 is positive 27. The absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So that's why 27 plus 3 will give you 30 and then just affix the uh, common signs. So the common sign in these two terms is negative. So let's just affix it to the final answer. So that's why the answer will be negative 30. While if the numbers have different signs, we will subtract the absolute value of the smaller value from the absolute value of the bigger value and then we'll affix to the difference the sign of the bigger value. So the absolute value of 38 is 38. Then let's subtract it from the absolute value of negative 53, which is 53. So that will give us 53 minus 38. So that will give us a difference equal to 15. And then we're just going to copy the sign of the larger number, which is negative. So that's why the answer is negative 15. Another example. So we have your four terms with the same signs. So let's, what are we going to do is we're just going to add this number. So we have to add 11, 1, 10, and 3, and that will give us 25. And then let us just copy the common sign, which is negative. So that's why the answer is negative 25. Last example, we have this 12 plus negative 9 plus negative 1 plus Four. So what they're going to do is to add first the numbers with the same sign. So we have here 12 plus 4, that will give us 16, and then negative 9 plus negative 1, so that will give us negative 10. And then we'll add 16 and negative 10, so they are uh, different signs. So let's just apply the rule, so that will give us positive 6. Next operation is subtraction. And to subtract two sign numbers, we're just going to change the sign of the subtrahend and proceed to algebraic 
addition. Let's first have this example. We have 18 minus 32 and by changing the sign of the subterrahend, which is the number in the latter part, so that will give us negative 32 and we'll proceed in algebraic addition. So that's why it will become 18 plus negative 32. And since we have um, two different signs, so we're going to subtract um, 18 from positive 32. So that will give us 14 and we'll copy the uh, sign of the larger number. So that's why the answer is negative 14. Next, negative 7 minus 15 and um, let's change the sign of the subterrahend so that will give us negative 15 and proceed to two algebraic addition so that's why we'll have negative 7 plus negative 15 and then we're since it's the same sign we're just going to add the absolute value of these two numbers which will give us 22 and let's just affix the common sign which is negative so that's why the answer is negative 22. Next example, 45 minus negative 19, change the sign of the subtrahend, which will give us positive 19. And then proceed in algebraic addition. So it will give us 45 plus 19. So just add their absolute values, which will give us 64. And since uh, the common sign is positive, so that's why the answer is positive 64. And last example, we'll have negative 17 plus negative 28. Change the sign of the subterrahend, it will give us positive 28 and then proceed to algebraic addition. So that's why we'll have negative 17 plus 28. So we have here different signs. So let's subtract uh, the absolute value of 17 from 28. So that will give us... 11 we're just going to attach the uh, sign of the the larger number so that's why the answer is positive 11 while in multiplying sign numbers the product is positive if the numbers have the same sign otherwise it's negative let's have your examples First example, 11 multiplied to 8, so that will give us 88. And since uh, these two have the same sign, so that's why the answer or the product is positive. Next is 12 multiplied to negative 7, so that will give us 84. And since they have different signs, so that's why the answer is negative 84. Next example, negative 21 times 9, so that will give us 189. And then again, they have different signs, so that's why the product is negative 189. And lastly, we have negative 5 multiplied to negative 13, so that will give us positive 65. So why? It's because uh, the two factors have the same sign. And the same thing goes with the division of numbers. If the numbers have the same sign, the quotient will be positive, And if not, then it's negative. So let's have your examples. 33 divide 3, so that will give us 11. And since they are both positive, so that's why the answer is also positive. Next example. 84 divided by negative 4, so that will give us 21. And since... The two numbers here have different signs, so that's why the answer is negative. Next, negative 273 divided 13 is equal to 21, but since they have different signs, so that's why the answer is negative as well. And last example, we have negative 21 divided by negative 11 so that will give us 11 and it's positive it's because these two have the same signs let's now proceed with powers this is read as a to the nth power and this just means that a will be multiplied to itself n times say for example we have 2 to the third power so it just means that we're going to multiply 2 to itself 3 times. So that's why we'll have 
2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 8. Next example, 2 multiplied to negative 3 to the fourth power. So that will give us 2 multiplied to negative 3, which is multiplied to itself 4 times. So that will give us 162. Next example, we have negative 11 to the second power. What are we going to do is to take the negative outside the bracket. And so 11 times 11, that will give us positive 121. And then don't forget to attach the negative sign here. So that's why the answer in um, negative 11 to the second power is negative 121. Next example, we have negative 143 raised to 0. So it is equal to 1. So you have to take note of this that any number raised to 0 is and will always be equal to 1. And last example, we have 5 to the third power multiplied to 3 to the 0 power. So that will give us 5 multiplied to itself 3 times and then 3 to the 0 power will give us 1, so that's why we have 1 here. So that will give us the product equal to 125. Let's now have roots. The nth root of a number a is a number which when raised to a power n gives a, denoted by nth root of a. So let's have these examples. As we all know, Square root of 25 is equal to 5. So this just means that when we square 5, that will give us 25. Same thing goes with the cube root of 64. It will give us 4. And um, if we cube 4 or if we raise 4 to 3, so that will give us 64. Same as with the fourth root of 16. So it is equal to 2. And when we raise 2 to 4 so that will give us the number inside the radical which is equal to 16 next is the cube root of 27 so that will give us 3 and this just means that if we raise 3 to 3 that will give us 27 as well and lastly we have here the square root of 36, so that will give us 6. And as we all know, if we square 6, so that will give us 36, which just leads us back to the radicand here.